Father, we thank you for all the testimonies. I call the testimonies to the Jesus. I thank you for many more testimonies. Amen. Thank you, Father. Jesus, let me pray. Second Corinthians chapter number 13. It is important to share testimonies. I have to give time for the testimonies. Second Corinthians. Can we just have our seats? Second Corinthians 13, 14. Are we there? I'm using the NIV this afternoon. It says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Again, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this afternoon. Holy Spirit, on my own, I thank I surrender myself, Holy Spirit. You speak to me inside your word. Let Jesus Christ take all the glory. I thank you for your word this afternoon. Empower your word with fire. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you for uh, the prophetic word this afternoon. Thank you for everything. To you be the glory. For in Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. Let's sit down and good afternoon to everybody. And the person just read from, and uh, this is Apostle Paul's final greetings. You see, when you study the book of, uh, sorry, when you read the, the, the books of Paul, or the books written by Apostle Paul, he always ends up his uh, a letter or epistles by greetings. Listen to me, it's like you've spoken to somebody, and towards the end, you say, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. If you study that very well, it entitles everything. Because what you need is the grace of God. Without grace, you cannot know Him. May the grace of God and the love, the love of God. So grace comes because of the love of God. If there's no love for Jesus Christ, grace of God cannot work for you or cannot work with you. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Grace. He said, and the fellowship. So I need grace. I need, I need to love God first. Then the grace upon me. And the more I fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit, the more I know Christ. Because Christ Jesus cannot be known except for the Holy Spirit revealed to you. So we are talking about the month of uh, February, which are looking at fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So this year, within this year, again, who can, can tell me? This year is a way of fellowship with, fellowship with, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, without the Holy Spirit, me and you can do nothing. John 15, 5. It doesn't matter your level of academics. It doesn't matter your connections. The Bible says in John 15, 5, Jesus says, without me, you, me, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. So today we shall look at the subject, develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Someone say, Nebo. Say, Nebo. Let you develop. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Say, devil, develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Now, to have fellowship, you must develop intimacy with a person. In order to fellowship with a person, remember the Holy Spirit is a person. God in three persons God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity. So, the Holy Spirit is a person. God in three persons. So, in order so fellowship, in order to have intimate, sorry, in order to fellowship with the person, you must know the person. In order to be intimate with the person, you must know the person. So intimacy and fellowship, they go hand in hand. You cannot be intimate with somebody you don't know, or you are not close to. You cannot fellowship with somebody you don't know. So in order to know him, we have to be intimate with him. Hallelujah. So intimacy, what is intimacy? Intimacy is the state of having a Relationship with the person. Now remember, I'm not talking about physical intimacy, I'm talking about spiritual intimacy. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So it's spiritual intimacy. Hallelujah. Amen. So intimacy builds up with time. And it must be consistent with time. The more time you get into a relationship, the more intimate you get into. The more time you put in, not just time, you must be there. There must be time, there must be care. 
Because you cannot tell me that you are intimate to someone you don't care about. Come on, say, talk to me. Someone say, talk to me. Now, you cannot say you are intimate with a person you don't care about. No, care must be there. Care is one of them. Love is one of them. You must care, you must love to be intimate with a person. And it goes back to that. Likewise, in order for us to be intimate with the Holy Spirit, we must love him as a person and we must put in some time in order for us to be intimate with him. By the way, you cannot be intimate with the Father or the Son if the Holy Spirit is not there. He must draw you closer. Glory be to God. Someone say devil. Someone say devil. Develop intimacy. Develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So one can develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So intimacy is birth birth to heart. And intimacy is birth from a pure heart. From a pure heart. If you don't love Christ genuinely out of a pure heart, you cannot be intimate with the Holy Spirit. So intimacy with the Holy Spirit begins when you love Christ genuinely. You, if, you, if you don't love Jesus Christ, you cannot be intimate with the Spirit of Christ. First John 1 11. They call the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. So if you're not intimate with Jesus, you're not intimate with the Holy Spirit. So it begins with you loving Jesus. The more you love Christ Jesus, the more intimate you become with the Holy Spirit. And also with God the Father. It is time for you and me, for many for the church, to be intimate with the person of the Holy Spirit. Because our lives are dependent on the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. If you put the Holy Spirit out, your life will be useless. That cannot advise you. No one can help you than Jesus Christ. Listen. Because a man helps you, a man will attach strength to the help. If man helps. Have you not heard? Have you not seen it? A sister, a sister is looking for a job. And a brother has a job. You know her when this is like looking for a job. She needs help. She's looking for a job. She wants to work. You know when you have the avenue. Instead of helping her, rather you want to sleep with her first. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy. You are wicked. You are wicked. I pray. May God hold you on that day. Some of us are doing these things. I'm preaching it to you. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. I say hello. It's not helping the sister, you want to help yourselves. Wickedness in the house of God. We say we are brothers and sisters in church. It's a lie. We are wicked. We are wicked. Because the sister is cannot, in fact, she's at a crossroad. Who told you? Today she went at a crossroad. What about yours? You know your own day. We all have times and moments that we are at a crossroad. I do. It takes the Holy Spirit to direct us. But sometimes you might use a man woman to help us get to the destination. But ladies and gentlemen, if you are pursued in the place to help people, please help without any string attached. And that cannot be possible if your hands are pure. Most of us are asking for commission. May that commission commission some of us. May that commission commission some of us. Commission. Can commission with your house? But your relationship can be. Have you not heard that somebody build their house and give the person why a relationship? Uh-huh. Not commission. Uh-huh. We don't know these things. The people you have today might be those pulling you up tomorrow. Yes. You don't understand. Yes. You might think you are up today, but God is looking at you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think you press people down, God will put you down. Yes. But if you have a hand to elevate people, God will also elevate you. Yes. It is vice versa. We are wicked in church. Why? When the Holy Spirit is absent in the man's life, expect anything. Yes, sir. In the man's life, we say we are believers. That's not true. Because if you are truly a believer, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Come on, love. Love to me. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. Yeah. So in Psalms 51, verse 10, David says, Create in me a pure heart, O God. He said, Renew a steadfast spirit in me. So intimacy begins with you loving Jesus Christ from a pure heart. If 
your heart is not clean, it's not pure, you cannot be intimate with the Holy Spirit. Because the more you love Christ, love for the pure heart. Because sometimes we profess to love from the wicked heart. If you love from the wicked heart, the results will be negative. Hallelujah. Yes, if you love from the wicked heart, the results will be negative. What do I mean? The results will be kind. Will be kind. But the man who has a pure heart and loves people, the results will glorify the Lord Jesus. Because the man is fruit in your life. Let your life so be for men that they might see your life and give glory to God. It is not possible for your life to shine if your heart is not pure. Brothers, please, your heart, our heart needs to be changed in church. Church needs to change your heart. Please have a pure heart. It begins from our hearts, not our lips. Then he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 11. He said, Cast it not from that, from that, but what? He said, What? Restore on. He said, Cast not away from that present. Do not take away your Holy Spirit. Do not take away the Holy Spirit. He said, that Restore on to me the joy of your salvation. Let's go to it. He said, Because if your heart is not pure, you cannot be saved. Let's go. Psalm 51, verse 10. Can we open it? Please open Psalm 51 verse 10, everybody. Psalm 51 verse 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 51 verse 10, I read from the end of it. It says, it says, verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God. So no one can create a pure heart by God, or by God. This is the David said. He was an anointing. A pure heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit. That spirit that is consistent in loving God. The heart that is consistent to seek God. Create that heart in me. When that heart is in this, ladies and gentlemen, you see the supernatural. It says, create in me a pure heart of God. Verse 11. He said, do not cast me away from thy presence. So you cannot dwell in the presence of God with a wicked heart. You cannot dwell in the presence of God with bad hands or dirty hands. You must clean your hands and wash your heart or punch your heart. Those that can stay or abide in the presence are those who clean hands and do heart. Go and pray and fast. God will not answer. For we know that God does not answer sins. It says, verse number four, it says, restore unto him. No, it says, take not away the Holy Spirit. This is the main person. For your heart to be created, to create a pure heart is by the Holy Spirit. To have a steadfast spirit in you is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit.
He said, as a deer panted for water, let my soul pant after me. Listen to me, I want to ask you this question. Are you panting for the Lord Jesus? Are you panting for him? Do you have him? Do you have him? Are you panting? The deer cannot do without water. So a believer cannot do without the Holy Spirit. Hunger for Christ is missing in church today. In the body of Christ today, we no longer have that hunger for Christ. We have hunger for riches. We have hunger for wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, your wealth will take you nowhere. Your riches will take you nowhere. Only Jesus Christ can take you somewhere. And he's the only one that saves. The earlier, the better. The earlier we tell ourselves the truth, the better. Only Jesus. The Bible says, what will prophet? A man to gain the whole world. Yes, my I agree with you. But if you are not careful, your riches might take you to hell. Don't get me wrong. Riches are good. What is good? Don't get me wrong. But if Christ is not in your heart, you need it. That's what I'm thinking. Hallelujah. The hunger for God is missing in our lives. Because when you hunger for God, your lifestyle will show. I will swear. It's like a man who is hungry to eat um, KFC. You are craving. Women say, I am craving. Study prayer with me. When a woman is pregnant, hello, young man, be ready. When a woman is pregnant, eh? she can wait to she can go at 2 a.m. in the morning. Thank God my wife never did that. Thank, thank God for you. She never did that. The brother was telling me, the, the wife would uh, wake, wake up, you are sleeping, wake up, wake up. I want to eat the uh, pounded plantains now. At 2 a.m. Pounded plantains. All the sugar. You see, I want it now. Oh, the baby also wants it now. At 2 a.m. That I am craving. Bring her everything you want, she won't take. She won't pound them for this. What? She has a craving for it. And once she brings it, she takes it as it is. She's okay. Likewise, are we panting for the Lord Jesus? How hungry are you to know him? To know Christ. Listen to me. Church will fail you. Church will fail you. But Jesus Christ never fails. I'm telling you the truth. Church will fail you. Seek for the Lord Jesus. Pray for him, go for him, come for Christ. The solution is only in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, number one, to, to, to develop intimacy, we must hunger for Christ. Psalm 103, verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Praise him. Bless him. So, pray for him. Can I ask you a question? Where is your heart? The Bible said in Matthew 6 21. Matthew 6 21. It says, Wherever a man's treasure is, then he is not. Where is your heart? I'm telling you, never waste your heart. Someone said, Never waste your heart. <laughs> Some of us are half are with some girlfriends. <laughs> She's holding your heart. If she said today I'm not doing it again before sleep, you become very sick. She said she's not doing it again before sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you go by, you see, I just trust this thing one guy. <laughs> trust this thing. Men can tell us also. Hello. I say hello. Some men say, men are jealous. It's not true. It's very simple. Men can be jealous. Okay, I'm not jealous. Okay, let me go. You come back like this, and the girl, the lady you really love, and you come, one slim guy is just the hand, and, and those slim guys are like them. When they just they put the hand like this, they can just and make like this, they can laugh. And you come around and say, ah, let me this guy's those things, the one I love. If care is not taken, there will be exchange of blows. How many of us see that? One, where a man's treasure is, then he's happy. So the Bible is telling us that, let your heart pant for the Lord Jesus. Let your heart praise for the things of God, for Christ himself, for the Holy Spirit. But if your heart prays for him, he will feel it. You cannot be intimate with the Holy Spirit if your heart does not find after Jesus Christ. You must have that hunger to know him. Hunger for Christ. Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your minds on things above, not on any things. To hunger for God, you must be born again. You can't be hungry for Christ out of Christ. 
You can't out of Christ with hunger for Christ. Glory be to God. In John 6 44, I quote, God has spared us the desire to be drawn to Him. John 6 44, when you read it, God has spared us with the desire to be drawn to God. Why? Hunger for God. Hunger for God is no more in the heart of the universe today. Hunger for Christ. And remember, your life is embedded in Christ. Your life is in Christ. So if you don't hunger for the one who has the bread of life, who is even the bread of life, then you are making a mistake. Hunger for Christ. Because the more you have that hunger for Christ, the more you become intimate to look for him. Can I ask a question? Brothers, if you have a passion for a lady, you look for her, you look for her. Talk to me somewhere, don't lie. Huh? Huh? You look for her. her. Where it is raining, you can look for her. It is falling, you can look for her. You search. You go to the stand close to the house. I have not seen them in three days. You you just want to stand close to the house and just stand there one, two, three, four hours. Just to see her. When you see her, oh, you're satisfied. Are we together? Don't pretend as if you don't do it. You do it. (laughs) Church, you don't pretend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah! She has not attended me for three days. What is happening? Four days. Let me just go there. So because your heart is there, you look for her. You cannot look for Christ if your heart is not for Christ. Listen, gentlemen, I want to beg you. Stop looking for mundane things. See Christ. When you put Christ first, all these things shall be added. Why do we struggle for love? In James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Draw near to me, and I'll, and I'll draw near to you. He said, Oh, he said, Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart. Again, your heart, you double minded men. Again, your heart, purify your heart. Your heart. I've seen wickedness in church among brothers and sisters. Wickedness. That sometimes I ask questions, I wouldn't be born again. I'm just honest. Sometimes you see the level of wickedness in church. You prefer not to come to church. Am I saying the truth here? Yes. And on some of us who speak in God, but our hearts are wicked. Some of us who profess our hearts are wicked. We ought to be an example to the world so they can come and receive Christ. But instead, you are sending them away from Christ because of their actions. Your heart is still wicked. Go to this one. Someone said, Devil, develop intimacy. Develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I want more of you. I want more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. Walk 
one of consciousness. Let's go to Psalms 1, verse 1 and 3. Psalms 1, verse 1 and 3. Psalms 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, or sit on the seat of scoffers, or mockers. Verse 2. But his delight, someone say his delight. Say his delight. Now, go back with me to verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Now, this talks about separation. You must be separated before verse 2 can be manifested in your life effectively. If you don't separate from mortars, from scoffers, from sin, you cannot meditate upon the word. He said, He's the light. He's the light. Either you choose to please your friends or you choose to please the Lord Jesus Christ. It's your responsibility. Either you choose to please Christ or you choose to please men. Then he says, Blessed is that man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. No, in the way of sinners, no sit with mortars. But, verse number two says, but his delight, his passion, his heart desire is to do what is in the law of the Lord, whom on whom he meditates day and night. So, without separation, you cannot meditate upon the world. You must separate from the front. You must separate from the world. I have decided to separate. I'm telling you the truth, without any emotion. I want to know Christ Jesus more and more. So I have to separate from many things. I don't have any problem with you. Bye bye. It's my life. Because I will stand before the judgment seat one day and give an account. So the earlier I separate from carnal things or things that don't make sense in my life, the earlier the better for me. Because the race is for you alone. I will stand before you will stand. We all will stand before the Jesus. He said, He said, praise from these things. Why? Because He wants to have the passion to meditate upon the world. The righteous live on the world. The just shall live by faith. How? Faith covered by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. So if you don't meditate upon the word of God, there's no result. Let's determine. Let's continue this series. But his delight is in the law of the Lord on whom this law he meditated at night. Now look at because he separated in look at between verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 2 he separated and meditated. Now, first thing talks about the result of meditation. Let's read. Verse 3. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. That's the result of meditation. A separation. He says, and he said, which heals is food. So when you begin to meditate upon the word, it brings food in your life. When you meditate upon the word, you see the fruit, you see the results. Because the word actually works. And the word becomes fresh. And God are most men. So the more you meditate upon the word of God, the more you see fruit in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have money that can feed only you, you are not sourcing. Yes, yes, I mean, you are not if you have money or wealth that is for you and your family, you are not subsidized. Yeah, Success comes when you have and you can feed more abundant. You take them abundant. Abraham was wealthy. Why? Go and check how many servants he had. That's wealth. So if you are thinking of you and your family, you are failed. Why? There must be the result. Why? Because if you go back to the world, the world says, He knew many things upon the world. He said, Therefore, look at verse 3 again. He said, He shall be like a tree planted by the, by the street of water, and which yields his food in season. In season. Did I specify the season? No. So it means in any season you can prosper. Yes, sir. In season. If the season for me is prosper, season for business is prosper. So, so you determine more you prosper. Why? The world. He said, he said, he look at the person. He said, and your need of his sleep does not winter. Whatever he does, he prospers. Prosperity is by the world. And in the world of God. So the more we meditate upon the world, the more we become prosperous in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you must meditate to be prosperous in the 
water, the water manifests in the physical prosperity. Most of us don't want to make it upon the world. We want the physical prosperity. That is why we are choosing in church. Come and pray, come and sow, and you'll be blessed. That's still. You are stealing yourself. You are killing yourself. Listen to me, it's better you know the word for yourself. Know the Bible for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you study the scripture and meditate. Now when you are meditating upon the scriptures, you meditate with the expectation for him to reveal himself to you. Remember what you are interested. So when I'm studying the word of God, I'm studying with the expectation for him to be revealed in the world. Because the word is Christ himself. I remember a scenario, I was studying John, John chapter 11, the story of Lazarus. I was in that man. I, I sat down, I was studying that, I was alone. I was studying that. Now, all of a sudden, I saw myself in that scenario in the Bible. When I stood close to the tomb and I saw the two ladies, I saw myself in the scenario. How did it happen? Because I was meditating. That was, it was only one time I've seen that. Only once. And when I came back, I, I feel God. So meditation can take you this far. I discovered this in meditation. Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua 1 He said, This book of the Lord shall not depart from you. But men that upon it day and night, that you may make your way successful. Progress is in the world. Please, church, go back to Bible studies. Brothers, go back to Bible studies. Sister, go back to Bible studies. How many of us are Bible here? I didn't say phone, not phone. Bible. Not phone, Bible. Use your hand up, sir. Because Bible is being changed nowadays. You don't know what They have a plan to change the Bible. So when we, the Bible that we pretend that we will be drunk. Hallelujah. So number one is hunger for Christ. Number two, you have to get the place of study. And now when you meditate upon God's word, there's the result. Proverbs 23, verse 13. When you meditate upon God's word, we saw number one, we saw that you bring forth fruit in your season. Bring forth fruit. You bring forth fruit. There's prosperity when you meditate upon God's word. And this one, when you meditate upon God's word, he says, surely there is a hope. There is a future hope for you. Proverbs 23, verse number 18. It says, and the expectation of the righteous, or your hope shall be cut off. What? When you meditate upon the word, there is hope for you. When you eat the word, there is hope for you. And Christ only is a hope. Oh God. Hallelujah. So intimacy starts with knowledge of the word of God. His word must be in your heart, not on your lips. His word must be in your heart. Isaiah 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your back. Isaiah 33, verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. And salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. Wisdom and knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Study the place of study. If I want to become a nurse, I have to go to nursing school to acquire the knowledge as a nurse. If I want to be an engineer, I go to engineering school, depending on a technical civil, many of them. You choose to okay, a civil engineer. You go to that department and you study to acquire the knowledge to become a civil engineer. Knowledge shall come when you study the place of study. So no study, no knowledge, and knowledge is power. Let's tell you, man, I have come to understand that Christians don't study the Bible. Believers don't study the Bible anymore. We assume, first of all, we studied two, three, four, five years ago. No, the Christ who yesterday has gone, today is another place. They are renewing every morning. His love is also renewing every morning. Therefore, his mercy is also renewing every morning. What is your God's level? You, can, you cannot be challenged if you are stabilized in the Word of God. Jesus could have been one if not of the world in the wilderness. And he said, It is written. What is written well? He knew the scripture. So when you know the word of God, challenges will come, you still stay with one because you know what God says. So when you know what God says and stand by what he says or on what he says, for Jesus Christ is a strong foundation. So when you anchor on his word, bring any shape, I will not know why. God has said it. When he said it, that's it. To perform. But if you know the word of God, challenges will come. You will run into men for solution. You might, most of the time, you run to the wrong men and women for advice. And sometimes, because of our wicked heart, 
The men are not giving you wrong advice, wrong person. Oh yes. Sometimes the people you want to for advice, they envy you. So there is an opportunity to just kill you and bury you. I'm alone here. I'm alone. Sometimes for the people you want to for advice, they envy you. So it's an opportunity has opportunity has come for you just to kill and bury the sister. They give you wrong counsel. Yes, in church, you are wicked. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the right counsel. Trust in the Holy Spirit. John 14, verse 1. Jesus said, trust in my Father. Trust in God. And also trust. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So the part of intimacy begins by believing in the one called the Word of God. You must believe in the one called the Word of God. You must believe in the Word of God. The plan of intimacy begins with knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Brother, before you got married, did you just did you show your wife you just you just start her and you just got married to her? Is that what you mean? Huh? First thing you have to do what? Ask her name. You approach her number one. It's full of your way so let me ask some more. Hello? Hi. You saw her, number one, you have to see. Is that true? Yes, sir. Okay. When you see number two, you have to trauma. Yes, sir. Okay, most of us are here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People are all spirits. No you are following. Now you are following. You first of all have to see what your eyes can see, your heart will believe. Yeah. Your heart was sleeping. Then you are pushed her. What's your name? Yes, sir. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Sissi. Sissi. You mean Sissi? Yes, Sissi. Sissi. And some of the sisters, they don't have a cat. Oh, what's Sissi? <laughs> I'm busy, I'm not. I'm, I'm rushing, I'm rushing somewhere. Please, what, what, what's her problem? How can I help you? She knows the problem. She knows. She's coming in herself, so tell me. And they'll put their hand behind like this and they're shaking around. Like, tell me the problem. What's your problem? I'm rushing, I'm busy. I'm a busy person. How can I help you? You don't waste my time anyhow. Someone say, How are you? She's coming in her But anyway, let the package yourself. Let the package yourself. Because sometimes some people are very, I don't know what I say. Because sometimes when you give in very cheap, the people are cheap. Can I advise you? No one is cheap. Yes, oh, I mean. Yes, sir. Am I wrong here? No one is cheap. Because she's for you, does not mean that she's cheap. No one is cheap, brother. Go and try it. So you saw how you had it. You went and asked her name. She smiled. <laughs> My name is Ngozi. <laughs> Well, huh? The next one and next you say, ah, ah, where do you live? Uh, where are you from? And that's so, one. The end of the way. Can I have a number? You win. It's intimacy to him. First sign. Text her. I got home. home. Did you get home? Yes, yes, I got home. Okay, good night. Next, next day, ah, good morning. How are you today? Any plan today? It's, it's intimacy to him. Like play, like play, like play. Like play. Like play. Have you eaten today? Ah, for me, no, I'm fasting today. Ah, I'm really. Are we together? Okay. One day we met up. Are you going to church? Ah, yes, I'm going to the church. The brother was going to Mount Zion. And because of the lady, he now left Mount Zion. Why? The woman has power. Hello? Yes, sir. Women have power. Women have power. If you want to establish a house, establish a woman first. Not the man. The woman will pull the man. They know how to pull men. They have this guy. You don't want me. Uh, you don't want me. That's why you don't listen to me. And you also listen to her. To please her. Intimacy goes for time and circumstances. Likewise, you see, all of this brings knowledge of who the person, both parties are. So you can be intimate with the Holy Spirit without knowledge. And knowledge is by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, as we close, trust in God. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in God with all your heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Trust in God, don't trust in men. Many men we trust that fail us. People we trust that fail us. Don't trust in a man. Trust in Christ. Don't trust in a pastor. Trust in Christ. Christ is the only way, not a mundane person. For unto God's will came. Unto God's we shall fail. But Christ is the only one that can never fail. A man can fail you. A pastor can fail you. But Christ Jesus will never fail. Trust in Him. Stop trusting your friends. Stop trusting your career or your certificate. Your connections will fail. 
you. But I know, I know a man, a man of power, Christ Jesus. He never fails. Hallelujah. In some members' senses, some members stand, those who know your name will trust in you. Some members stand. For you, O oh Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. For you, O oh Lord, have never forsaken. Then he says, I was young, and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Not their children begging for bread. God does not forsake the righteous. Please trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way out. He said, I am the way. He is the only way out. Trust in him. Hallelujah. So to develop intimacy, we have to hunger for Christ. We have to take the place of study and meditation. We have to trust in the one we call Holy Spirit. Trust in the Son. Trust in God the Father. And also, ladies and gentlemen, your greatest desire is to develop intimacy with Christ. For He is a judge. Your intimacy with God should form the most vital relationship in your life. Don't put men in your heart. Don't put ladies in your heart. Put Christ in your heart. For those men will leave you one day. Those ladies will leave you one day. But I can guarantee you that Christ never fails. Christ Jesus never fails. Develop intimacy with Christ. For we are living in the end time where Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Heaven is with heaven is with. The right will happen. The power says what I believe in. God has never lied. His word is here and me. Let's say that let us develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit right now because we are living in the end time where any church now is not stable. In church today, there's a lot of fault. I'm not condemning. I'm just being honest to us to be careful. How? On and on you cannot. But when you trust and love the person of the Holy Spirit, He helps you. He opens your eyes to see where you are. Hallelujah.